Welcome to another session by the Metro New York chapter of the National Black MBAs. I'd like to welcome our friends from Estee Lauder, our friends from Vita, and the Charles Group. And this subject is dear and dear to my heart because I am a supply chain professional. So I understand the power of supply chain diversity and the importance and impact on our community and overall environment. As a HBCU alum, I'm happy to have another HBCU alum, Ashley, with us. And we're gonna go through um, a great presentation, but more or less a great conversation on the importance of supply diversity. Um, it is not as, uh, uh, how can I say, as simple as it gets because there's so many complexities to the subject. But what a, what a great brand that SA Lorda has is managing 24 of them. You have to be in sync with your customers. You have to be in sync with your environment. And you have to be in sync with the people that support all 24 of those brands. Without further ado, I'll, I'll present to you Estee Lauder, Avita, and the Charles Group. Thank you. So I think we can get started. Maybe I'll go over to the next slide. And hello, everyone. So really happy to be here. And I think we can go to the next one. Um, so I'm Ashley Gabb. I'm very, very excited to be here today. Overall, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the panelists that we have, and we're gonna all have a chance to introduce ourselves. I'll kick it off. Um, and so I can, we can go to the next slide where I'll kick it off. But before I kick off, uh, as Andrew mentioned, I saw the way this event was being promoted and was so happy and excited to see the call out that I was an HBCU grad. I am a graduate from uh, Lincoln University, the first historically black university, although probably Wilberforce or Cheney may uh, disagree with that. Uh, but the reason I love to call out that I'm from an HBCU, especially in this setting, is I believe institutions like Lincoln and HBCUs and associations like the National Black MBA Association are so important, so relevant today, and so crucial to the work that we're doing around social justice and uh, racial equity. So really happy uh, about the partnership that we've had so far and look forward to growing what we're doing with you guys. So really happy to be here. Um, before I go into the background about supplier inclusion and diversity, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Estee Lauder companies. Um, you know, this year, 2021, we're celebrating 75 years. So we've been in business for 75 years. It's our anniversary. Um, and I think, you know, companies that have been along, around for that long are always so fascinating to me. But I think what's really even more inspiring and awe-inspiring is the story that we have at Estee Lauder Companies. We were founded by a woman in 1946. And uh, I think, you know, I don't think it was the most conducive environment for a woman to start a business during that time. I even think about the work I do today to still advocate and promote for diverse businesses and can only imagine when there weren't mechanisms and programs like that in place at that time, you know, 75 years ago. But here we are today, uh, a multi-billion dollar publicly traded corporation with uh, tens of thousands of employees worldwide and offering many different products from hair care to skin care to fragrances and makeup. And you'll hear a little bit more today about the hair care aspect of the things that we do. Um, but I think again, you know, sometimes I sit and think like, how were we able to do it? Uh, and I can't help but think that a big part of our story and our success is really about the partnerships we were able to forge, right? So Estee and Joseph Lauder used to call our suppliers our friends. Uh, and we still have some of those friends today that we've had from the beginning. And I think that really speaks to the long lasting trusting relationships that we've been able to build with our suppliers to really build our products and, and create value. Um, so I think I have the coolest job on the block because I get paid to uh, you know, make sure that we're diversifying our friends <laughs> um, and, and also get paid to uh, live out my passion and my commitment and personal mission. So uh, my job really is to stand up our supplier diversity program. We started this program in 2019 uh, with the mission to economically, you know, 
grow and develop the small and diverse businesses that we have in our supplier base. Um, and by no means did we just start getting those businesses in 2019. We've had those businesses for some time, but the program really makes sure that we're paying special attention to grow those businesses, but also to make sure that there's equitable participation throughout our supply chain, that there's equal opportunity in the things that we do in our business, uh, but also to make sure that what we do is also reflected and, and what we value is also reflected in the suppliers that we do business with. So making sure that there's our value system throughout the whole ecosystem of our supply chain. Um, we believe that inclusive and diverse supply bases really help us simulate economic growth, right? So it's not about just checking a mark for us. Again, this has been embedded in who we are for some time. Uh, it helps create jobs from the communities from which we source. It helps us drive innovation and, and really create competition in the marketplace. And it also just makes sense to have a supply base that reflect, reflects our consumers as well as our employee base. Um, we're really excited to be able to share some of the stories that we have today with, uh, as, as it relates to how we're driving innovation with a diverse supply base. You'll hear a little bit more from the Charles Group. That's one of our diverse suppliers, especially it's specifically a black owned supplier, um, but there's some great work that we're doing with them. And I think it allows us to show like the deep connections that we've had so far with our suppliers. As I mentioned, um, when we look at our friends, we're looking at those that can lead with quality. And again, that story that we'll tell today will show that, but we look at those that lead with quality and innovation but also sustainability. Our program for supplier diversity falls underneath the responsible sourcing team. So of course we're keen on sustainability and, and really how we can grow that. And also of course the best total cost possible that we can have. And so when we look at who we're bringing in and, and the relationships that we develop, we look at that, you know, bringing in those suppliers from the, that lens. When we moved our, you know, program to FY20 and we were able to see it grow a little bit. We were proud to say that we were able to spend 190 million with small and diverse businesses um, and staying true to our heritage of women owned and, and supporting and empowering women. Um, we spent 90 million with uh, women owned businesses in FY20. We also made a public commitment last year to double our spend and really leverage our power to uh, double spend with black owned businesses by FY23. So we've set you know, some pretty ambitious goals internally as well as externally, but I think we believe that that's a signal again to our consumers and our employees to say that we are truly committed to this and truly committed to diversifying the spend that we have allocated uh, for those, those individuals. Our supply base is pretty large. Um, but we have hundreds of diverse uh, suppliers in our network, and they range from many different categories. When we think about, and most of the time the questions are, well, what's a diverse supplier? Um, the diverse supplier is uh, a, a, in, you know, a company that's owned and operated, and 51% owned and operated by a diverse individual. So what we include in our program are minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, disabled-owned businesses, and LGBTQ plus-owned businesses. Uh, we do require a certification, um, and there are many different ways that you can get that certification, and we accept several different uh, certifications and cert from different agencies. So you can look at getting a certification from the local level, or you can look at it from getting it at a national level. So I know like here in the state of New York, you can get it through the city or the state. Um, I think, you know, if there is a fee, it's a very small fee to get that type of certification, but it gives you access to programs like this, but also opportunities within the state and the city as well. So it just really helps you amplify the services and capabilities that you have. Um, and the reason we require it is we really just wanna make sure that we maintain and meet the expectations and spirit and intent of the program to really allocate those funds to uh, companies that are indeed owned and operated by diverse individuals. We're also members of quite a few advocacy organizations that help develop and grow and create opportunities for um, you know, diverse owned businesses. So we're members of the National Minority Supplier Development Council. Uh, and that organization goes in and certifies that 
the businesses are indeed owned and operated by minorities, but they also provide resources and, um, and development opportunities for minority owned businesses. So we're proud to be members of that organization. We're active members of that organization and it's at a national level, but there are regional councils. I believe there's 23 and there is a council here in New York. There's the New York, New Jersey council that you can also participate in at a local level. We look at also women-owned businesses, as I mentioned. So we're part of WeBank, which is the Women Business Enterprise National Council. They go and certify women-owned businesses within the U.S., again, providing resources and development opportunities for women-owned businesses to really amplify their business and capabilities. Uh, from a global perspective, because we look at our, our program globally now, uh, we are members of We Connect International. So that does the same thing that We Bank does, but from an international perspective. So it goes in and helps businesses get certified as women-owned businesses. Um, and they operate in about 46 countries to help companies that are based in these 46 countries get certified and again, provide them with resources and access to buyers such as an ELC. Um, and then lastly, we're members of the Minority Supplier Development Council in the UK. And I'm proud to mention that because this year we are launching our program and fully standing up a program in the UK with a focus on, again, uh, developing small businesses as well as minority and ethnic minority owned businesses and black owned businesses is a part of that list. Um, so we're excited to be launching in the UK this year as well. We use these organizations really as a, a point to get access to new suppliers uh, outside of those that we're already doing business with. So they have immense you know, categories and classifications that they work with and we are able to leverage their database to learn about the capabilities of the many different supply bases that they have. Um, and we usually have opportunities and have diverse suppliers supporting you know, complete range of aspects for our business. So whether it be from the products that we're creating to supporting the operations of our company. So, you know, our suppliers can be supporting us from packaging to advertising and promotion and everything in between. Today, we're excited to share the work and the journey that we've been on with uh, advertising and promotion agency, the creative agency, which is the Charles group that will be talking to us today. Um, you know, rather than me, chat for an hour about our program, we thought we want to, you know, at least bring the program to life and illustrate the work that we're doing with our diverse suppliers, the deep relationships that we've been able to build and the results that we've been able to drive with some of our diverse suppliers. I think this story especially helps us because it really tells, you know, the journey that we've been on to better engage and understand our consumers but also really shows the work we've been doing with our program and just even overall to economically develop and grow small and diverse businesses. So, so excited for you guys to hear from the Charles Group. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, and I think, you know, as part of the program, we always want to amplify the story that we have, the stories of our diverse suppliers. And I think overall, they're just a pretty dope, you know, company that we want everybody else to know about. So, um, you know, to be able to share our story and the stories that they have with other companies, I think is really the job that we have here. So, so excited to share it. But before we do uh, share their story and give them an intro, I'm going to turn it over to Gail, who uh, leads our Aveda team uh, as far as consumer engagement to tell you a little bit about one of our brands, Aveda and the work that they do in the hair care industry. So I'll turn it over to Gail. Thank you so much, Ashley. And yes, uh, I think of the Charles Group, you'll hear me call them TCG all the time as uh, not just a partner, not just a friend, but more than that, like um, a dear, dear friend and partner, I guess. I don't know what other words I could use to describe them. Um, but before we get into that relationship, a little bit about me and Aveda. Um, Aveda was founded in 1978 by this incredible visionary, I'm sure not many of you have heard of him, Horace Drucklebacher, and he really founded Aveda with this incredible mission of creating a holistic, creating a holistic beauty through wellness. The word Aveda actually means knowledge from the whole, and there's a very interesting long story about Horace that I won't get into right now, but he was a hairdresser. He started at the age of 14, um, and he was kind of a beauty maven. Like, for example, those of you who go into your local salon and all the products 
X that they want you to buy are at the front of the salon. That was Horst. He was the very first in our industry to put beauty products at the front of the salon versus tucked away in a back corner. Um, he, we like to always say we are born cruelty free. Uh, we are 100% people tested. We've never tested on animals. We are 100% vegan. We are over 90% naturally derived. Um, some of our products are 100% naturally derived. So we really are the highest naturally derived products with the highest efficacy you could possibly find on the market um, without destroying the planet from where we get all of our incredible products. We are inspired by nature daily. We use PCR packaging. I mean, I could go on and on. This isn't a CSR talk, um, but our mission is at the heart of everything we do. And that's really to care for the world we live in and all the people around it. Um, and that's been there since the days of Horace and continues every day. Some of the unique things we do at Aveda that um, the Charles has really brought to the forefront and why we picked such an incredible partner in the Charles is we are very proud to say we test on all hair types and textures for all of our hair care products. And that's a big deal in the industry because that takes a lot of time to go across that incredible spectrum, testing the efficacy and creating claims that work for everybody, creating products that work. So we can't just have a one size fits all approach to all of our products. We have to create deep and light. We have to create extra oils and butters or whatever the case may be, depending on those hair types and textures to make sure that that product line we put into the market can actually work for everybody. Um, and one of our challenges was in making sure that that was brought to the forefront of our communication. I work in consumer engagement, which means my team is really responsible for those, what we like to call 360 activation plans, but really it's how do we make sure wherever that consumer is in the world, they're on TikTok, they're on Instagram, they're, you know, sitting in a salon chair, walking in a mall, they're all the places and spaces that you are. They understand who Aveda is, what we stand for, and what products we are promoting or talking about. Um, and so that's what my team does is we're responsible for getting all those messages all out into the world. And when we talk about messages, it's not just here by this product, but it's stuff like International Women's Day or Pride, or maybe it's Black History Month, all of which we as a brand founded in Minnesota need help with. Um, and my team is really at the center of that storytelling out of Ada, and we kind of weave together all those stories to put our messages out into the world. And uh, we couldn't do any of that, and we couldn't tell our story in the most compelling, authentic, um, inclusive way as we do without incredible partners, especially the Charles, who uh, really are the first agency We'll go into the, a little bit of the history later on, but the ones who come forward always to say, wait a minute, I'm not sure you want to say it that way, or mm, there's probably, you're missing this segment of the population. There's probably a better way to do it. Um, but they are really, truly our incredible partner against across all segments of the population, not just making sure that we are hitting inclusivity, inclusivity and diversity requirements, but it's every customer out there. Um, so that's a little about me. I've been with Aveda for going on three years, and every day is really quite an adventure. And uh, couldn't work for a better company than Estee Lauder. I am I'm at home with my Estee Lauder family. And with that, I will turn it over to Sam to allow her to introduce herself and her incredible agency. Hi there, I'm Samantha. Um, I am co-founder and chief creative officer at The Charles. Um, we are a digital focused creative agency. I'm originally from Manchester, England, um, moved to New York in 2002 and opened up the agency with my brother in 2011. Um, I oversee all of the creative and creative strategy. He oversees the finance um, and business side of the business. Um, we really Really have a great partnership and relationship obviously being brother and sister some ask you know do you guys argue what have you uh, we do but it's always for the greater good of the company um we named our company the charles after our great great grandfather alfred charles Seeley. um we wanted a family name and 
we wanted to create a company with a legacy. It was very important to us. Um, Edwards just didn't have that ring to it. Um, and what we also knew about our, our great great grandfather was that he kind of transcended the boundaries um, back in the Caribbean, in the West Indies, St. Kitts to be precise. Um, and so he was a very popular man, but he was popular with everybody. Um, and he did transcend boundaries to get to where he got to. Um, Aaron and I have always been really inspired by that story. That's something that we've carried through in our lives. Um, the way that we were raised and brought up, our parents taught us to be excellent and also be responsible. Um, and we've never shied away from that. So that's a little bit of history about the name of the company and where we're from. Uh, next slide. Uh, our client roster. So I would say that we have unequivocally worked with a lot of prestige brands. We actually got our start um, working with Bloomberg Media as part of Justin Smith's 100 day strategy to completely revamp how Bloomberg Media the Bloomberg Media Division did ad sales online. Um, many that know Bloomberg know that they're, they were a terminal business and they were kind of, I wouldn't say in the dinosaur ages, but I would definitely say that they were behind the times on the media side um, and how they communicated all of the things that Bloomberg had to offer. Um, we were really fortunate enough to work with an excellent team who took what we said on board as creatives um, they looked at us as creatives first um, and also what we knew culturally, you know, I think our start, if I'm going to be really honest, was designing websites and doing graphic design for DJs and fashionistas in New York City in downtown New York when we first started. Um, and so we had a lot of that kind of in the know insights that a lot of companies now come to us for. Um, Bloomberg, the project was really successful. And so that led us to relationships with Facebook um, and Cartier at the same time, which was really wonderful. Um, Cartier, we've actually worked with for the last, uh, since, gosh, for the last seven, eight years, um, which is, and they've been a really excellent partner. Um, where we've excelled in helping them, very similar to Aveda is, bringing their brand essence and brand to life in the digital space. Um, I would say that, you know, sometimes when you've got companies, they don't always really fully understand the expanse of digital, all the corners, there are many, um, all the platforms, all the channels and how they communicate their message while being authentic and true to themselves. Brands like Cartier, like Aveda, like Marriott, like Bacardi, they all have legacies. And I think one thing that we do very well is we're not trying to change them. We're not trying to change who they are. We're taking the essence of who they are and making sure we amplify that um, in a relevant and authentic way um, throughout digital. So that's just a little bit about our client base and where we came from. Uh, and then, yeah, just again, what makes us different? Um, data, cultural insights, and digital transformation. Um, data, research, and insights is really important to us. That's been the backbone of our relationship with Aveda, taking what they tell us about performance, taking what we know from consumer insights, and making sure that we're making it work in every single touch point that we touch and do. Um, as we've got here, we build and transform brands. So. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our relationship with Aveda. Uh, as always, as Gail had said, it really has been an amazing partnership. Um, since 2019, we've partnered with them as their digital um, and strategy agency. It's been a really amazing ride. I think we've grown as a company, as has the brand and as has Aveda. Uh, Gail has been a fantastic partner. It's almost like a love fest right now, but I cannot tell you enough how great it is to work with really smart, driven people who also push you to the next level. And in turn, that has pushed us um, creatively, strategically, to think differently about how we're doing things, think, think differently about what we can do for Aveda. So it really has been a fantastic partnership. 
Um, when we first started working with Aveda, um, their approach to marketing had always been 360, but our role really with them is to make sure that we're looking at all the touch points, connecting all the dots so that we can recruit, most importantly, and retain those new audiences. Um, we also, as Gail had said, do work, we work really closely with the Vader's internal team also to make sure that we're talking authentically to all hair types across the spectrum. Um, it's something that, I'm, Gail, you're going to hear me talk about this again. You know, not many people know this, and I do think it is important, and it's a story that we, we're, we're telling and we're making sure that we're including in all of the marketing and messaging that we're doing, but Aveda really truly is an excellent brand in terms of they test and formulate for all hair types and textures, and so when you think about that as a sentence, eh, what does that mean? But they really do test for all hair types and textures, coils, curls, waves, straight hair, fine hair, thick hair. And I think that's something that's really unique about this brand today in the hair care space and something that a message that we definitely are proud of when we talk about working with Aveda and how great they are, especially from a uh, sustainability and corporate social responsibility perspective as well. Um, I think it's our passion and our love for what the brand is doing that drives us also and pushes us to create great work. Um, I think just a little bonus point here that they're currently number one um, in the Essay Lauder portfolio for Instagram follow growth, which, you know, we do do a lot of work on with them on Instagram. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I can go through the strategic stuff that we do with them. Again, all of our work is grounded in data and strategy. It's really important. Um, you know, things can look beautiful, but for us, they have to mean things too. So this is just a snapshot of our approach um, when we're thinking about strategies and how we can transform Aveda uh, from a digital perspective. Um, and this is just an example of some of the creative that we've executed. This is for one of their hero um, products, Nutriplenish, which was kind of the first um, major high performance hair care product that we worked with Aveda on, um, which is really great. Um, we've always, again, wanted to make sure that we're showcasing Aveda in an authentic way and speaking to all audiences. Um, and this is just a snapshot of kind of the work that we've done for them as pertains to Nutriplenish and so on and so forth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's all I have from me. Awesome. Thanks so much, Samantha. Every time I hear this story, I think there are two things that fascinate me. And one is that you were able to start a company with your brother. I don't think there's anything I can start with my brother that wouldn't be successful. Um, I can't even start a conversation with him at times. So I, I'm always fascinated by the sister brother relationship and business, but that also you guys started uh, with DJs and fashionistas <laughs> in New York City at to all these prestige uh, brands that you work with. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you got there, but I feel like it's only right that we turn it back over to Gail. I think we heard your side of the love fest uh, <laughs> and the love story. I think Gail has you know, definitely told that, you know, she wants to share how the relationship started with you. And then also, um, you know, how you guys were able to really support the way they looked at inclusive engagement with their consumers. So Gail, I am, tell us about Thank your time. You. If you, whoever's, I don't know who's running the slides, but if you could put up the first slide, I think that's a great place to start. Um, when I started at Aveda, we knew that we needed to sort of overhaul how we approached talking to our consumers and we needed to be very, very digitally savvy and digital first. Um, and so uh, we've all seen the trend out there, right? Where it started, how it started, how it's going. And I think a little peek into our Instagram uh, feed is a good, good example of where, when we started our relationship, where we were and how it has going. So if you could flip forward a few slides, please. 
There we go. So on the left is kind of where we were at, which is just kind of this chaotic space. And, and we knew that we needed help because we weren't, you know, to, to, to go from uh, an organization who is able to create really compelling, beautiful hair, but market that across everything, websites, emails, blogs, uh, Instagram, TikTok, wasn't even around at the time, let's be clear, Facebook, Snapchat, um, paid media across, you know, in every single one of those partners, um, we needed help and we needed a great agency. And so where we, when we started our search, we actually, I reached out to some um, friends that I have and former colleagues at Facebook to say, I need someone who gets this space really, really well, not just the organic side, but the paid side. And they gave me some recommendations of some agencies and the Charles was one of those agencies. And um, very honestly, we wanted the best, the absolute best we could afford, the best that, you know, we would start small and hopefully grow, but I just wanted the best that we could possibly find for Aveda and for Estee Lauder. And then when we found the best, we wanted to make sure that they were able to help us with that diversity story, with that inclusion story, really be authentic in that storytelling. Um, because of, as Sam said, as I've said, that idea of testing on all hair types for a brand that's as old as ours, founded in Minnesota, it's kind of just a lot of lip service is what it sounded like to consumers. And um, maybe many of you have seen that ad or seen an ad where they'll put lipstick, right? Uh, or foundation across someone's arm to show it comes in, you know, 728 shades. Well, testing on all hair types is our 728 shades, but how do we really authentically communicate that? And that's where we were really missing the boat. So on the next slide, we found the Charles. And it's been a wonderful, fabulous, bumpy, um, you know, roller coaster of a ride, not because of the Charles, but because of the world in which we live, right? Uh, and with you all today, because of the world in which we live. So, you know, we had we had a lot of contests running at Aveda. We had a lot of, you know, crazy stuff going on. We, TCG came on board. They helped us sort of with our very first campaign, which was talking about not even a hero, just a product we were launching, which was Sat Moss. And then we really, really entrusted them to help us become social partners, to make sure that they were at the forefront, um, looking at our content, looking at what we were creating in terms of content, and then helping us put it in social. And I think heading to Nutriplenish was the first time Sam called me to say, Gail, uh, we have to talk about some of these photos. You absolutely cannot put that out into the world. Like that is you're going against everything you're saying. She calls it her woke call. Like, this is not acceptable. You can't position five models like this with this blonde up front and the black girl in the back. No, 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 no. And this was, we were ready to go to print. I mean, this had gone through everything. There were a whole bunch of photos that were gonna be the size of the wall behind me. I mean, just that you can't see, but it's a big wall. And in all of our store windows and everything. and and that's when I knew that not only was she great in business, super talented, but they were truly, truly beyond partners. They were friends. They wanted the best for the brand and they knew their business inside and out. And they were really going to help us um, think about the way we communicate in a much different way. It was a scary moment. I'm sure it was scary for Sam. Um, it was scary for me. I'd been with the brand for four months, five months. I had to go to our president to be like, up for us is we can't do this because this agency that you don't even know I hired um, <laughs> doesn't believe it. And you know, we did, and we continue to find ways to be better, better, and better. Uh, we launched another giant, we call them heroes, another giant hero botanical repair that again was tested on all hair types and textures. And because of that testing, we have multiple formulas because not everyone has the same hair. Uh, we are a huge mission-focused organization, as I said, and TCG and the team have really helped us turn those, turn the very um, challenging, complicated scientific world of CSR messaging into consumer-facing messaging that consumers like, and we were on a great roll, and then COVID hit, and we had to pivot as everybody on this call, and I won't talk about pivoting and resilience because this is our normal life, but TCG was there to lead the charge to help us make sure we took 
what was happening to everyone in the world and make them find ways to not pander, to not talk down to them, to not make them feel scared, to not say like, you know, you're stuck at home, what you going to do, but to really give consumers something else to do besides being stuck at home and eating, which is what I did. Um, and then being in Minneapolis, obviously, the um, death of George Floyd had a huge impact right on the tail of COVID. And how do we talk about what we, a Minneapolis-based organization um, within the larger, beautiful Estee Lauder family, how do we how do we react to that? How do we get better? How do we educate ourselves? How do we support? How do we donate without it feeling once again, like we're just doing a corporate check mark. And so again, we turned to TCG. We, we had our ideas internally. We worked obviously very closely with Estee Lauder, um, but it was our backyard and, and the Charles was there to really help us communicate what we were going to do to um, just be better and to learn and to sort of be quiet and to continue forward. And that relationship, you know, and what they've brought to the table just continues on to this day. You know, we can, this little arrow chart could keep going and going and going because um, it's really never ending on all fronts. And especially when it comes to inclusion and diversity and making sure that we communicate to all consumers what Aveda stands for. The Charles has been at the forefront of that. Um, as people at Aveda like to say, but especially my boss on the next slide, we were absolutely looking for the best agency for the work to, that needed to be done. And we found that with the trials and so much more. And it is a big love fest, but I think we're both very proud of the work that we're both doing and um, about how we both are challenging each other. And truly, truly, no matter, no matter what, that's what you're looking for um, with a supplier, you know, that's sort of like, calling employees, you know, uh, assets. It's so much more than that with us. And I think that that's, that's how these relationships are truly, truly transformational to businesses and to people. And that's what we have with Sam and her team. I think I saw a hand raised with a question. I don't know. I don't know what that means or who's moderating, but I saw something. I, I saw that. We'll definitely get to um, some questions. We let, we're going to okay. leave some room for questions. Uh, I think, well, first of all, Gail, thank you so much for that transparency. I think, you know, being open to saying that, you know, there were times we weren't getting it right and that you allowed Sam and team to be that trusted partner. And I guess also just an extension of our team, I think is really amazing, especially you know, how it started and what you were looking for and then not realizing that this partner could grow to, you know, fill in so many other gaps that you didn't even realize you needed. I think I'd love to hear that story. I love to hear the love story of all. Um, and I guess, so then that goes back to you, Sam. Um, you know, I think with this social climate, with, you know, things that Gail mentioned uh, that have come up with a lot of your brands, has that changed the way you position the Charles Group? Uh, you know, are you going front and center with being black owned? Um, or, you know, typically how are you going to reach, you know, existing clients and potential clients now that, you know, things have shifted and there's more interest in working with black owned agencies? Um, yeah, interesting question. We have never really said, okay, we are a black owned agency and we're only doing black centric work or we're only doing work related to x we know that the, the, there are agencies that do that we've never actually marketed ourselves as such um i think the doors have opened you know we've fielded a lot of calls from a lot of different brands a lot of it i'm gonna say really transparently has been lip service um it was almost like after um, the murder of George Floyd and Black Lives Matter, the, we did get a lot of calls and we had one call with one particular company who will, shall remain unnamed. Um, and the procurement person said, I, um, my boss had said that I needed to reach out, you know, and so we think you're a really great agency. We're like, oh, well, 
you know, what was the sort of, was it our SEO? Because we were also running hard SEO, like only for our SEO is working. And she was like, oh, well, we're looking for, you know, black agencies to come in. And so we can diversify our vendor list a little bit. And honestly, I think it was just said so offhand, but for us, it was like, this isn't going to be the right partner immediately. And, you know, I will say that Erin and I are very driven by right the right kind of partners for us. Um, it's really important. You know, when we first started, we were quite small and it was still important even then when we were 10 people to make sure that we're working with the right people because we do put our heart and soul into our business. Um, going off into a tangent here, but in terms of how that's, how business has perhaps changed now, um, I just say that we're able to bring authentic, cultural authenticity um, and a different perspective to brands and companies that perhaps they might not have realized before, but we've been doing that. We've been doing that for the last 10 years. Um, we're perhaps just maybe talking about it a little bit more, but I think it's always been our core mission anyway. So hopefully that answers your question. No, absolutely. Awesome. And it's great to hear. Um, so I know we're almost going at time and we do want to leave some time for Q&A. I see there's some Q&A coming in. So before we close, I have a question for both of you. Um, so I'll start with you, Gail. Uh, any advice that you can give businesses out there, business, business owners out there to really get into or gain clients in the hair care industry? Um, please share it. And then Sam, I think in you know in your space, if you have any advice that you want to give from a peer-to-peer -peer you know, perspective, especially you've been able to tap into so many other industries and your story is so impressive of how you've been able to grow. So uh, turn it over to Gail first and then Sam, any advice you can give? Yeah, hair is hard. Um, <laughs> that's my first bit of warning. Hair is difficult. Uh, because it is super personal and it is so different for everybody. I think the biggest piece of advice is really understanding the um, company and the, the, the different brands that you're talking to or possibly pitching because, um, you know, Aveda is so CSR and mission focused that we expect that of our agency partners. We expect it of them to really um, grasp that and we you know have very vigorous um, standards we have to go through when we post any you know when we post when we work with different suppliers to make sure that our mission isn't just lip service to anybody because you know we can't um, we can't say this is what we stand for and then pivot and not have those same um, ethics in the people that we work with and so that's True of Aveda, but I think that's probably true of every hair care brand out there is, you know, they all have the thing that they stand for and what they, what they want to be known for. And I think making sure that whatever you bring to that company, it's got to be about what they stand for and how you can add, be added to that or help them see, you know, sort of open up that aperture a little bit versus trying to come at it from a different angle because, um, like any market, it's highly competitive and it all can feel very much the same, the same. Sam? Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, I think my advice would be, as I had said earlier, to look for the right partner. Like it, that within itself is how you can grow and how you will grow your business is being in a great partnership where you can grow and build together and understand one another, AKA love fest at Aveda. Uh, so yeah, I think that would be my advice. Um, oops. Thank you both to um, a great discussion and an overview of your journey and the commitment that you've had in this space. I see there are questions coming in. I want to first say, I, I also want to give some advice. I know I should, probably shouldn't ask myself a question, but um, you know, from a supplier diversity program perspective, I know one of the questions that came in is you know, about certifications. Um, and again, there are different certifications that you can get based on the type of ownership that you have. So if you are a black individual, you can certify, and, and Sam's a company has done this, 
you can certify your company as the, if you're 51% owned and operated by a black individual, you can certify your company as being black owned. And there's a certification that you will have and you can get from, um, like I said, it could be a local agency or a national agency that does validate that. And they'll go through and assess uh, that, that is, you're indeed owned and operated by um, you know, a diverse individual. I can also put in the chat uh, and I you know, share that out. I don't know if it actually went through, but a link uh, through this New York state where you can go and start that process if you are looking to receive that certification. Um, and I see we also have a question around uh, supplier diversity overall and when we officially launched uh, and, and how we've been able to grow. So we officially launched, as I mentioned, in 2019, and we've been you know, socializing our goals and our targets with brands such as Aveda. As um, you know, Andrew mentioned, we have over 25 brands that we work with or that are underneath our scope. And um, you know, each brand has its own suppliers and diverse supplier network. And part of the socialization is really making sure that they identify and know who those diverse suppliers are and that they grow the spend with them. And sometimes with the conversation, we learn you know, about new diverse suppliers that we didn't even know about. And I think that's what happened here with the conversation with Gail is you know, she also raised her hand and said, hey, we're working with this great black owned creative agency. And so it's a, a lot of socializing that we do to really uh, help you know, promote the, the program that we have and the goals that we're trying to reach and targets that we set within our company but also within the brand. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, I think that Cabrina asked about our program and how we've evolved overall. Another thing we've been able to do, and Sam has been a part of this, is spotlight some of our diverse creative agencies. So making sure that you know, other brands outside of Aveda can understand the capabilities of those diverse suppliers that we have in our roster um, and, and giving them access to new buyers and new purchasing decision makers. And I'm going to also share the link for everyone to, you know, a starting point, but there are several different organizations that you can be a part of to, or, or agencies that you can use to certify your, your company. So one of the questions we have is what's been uh, your favorite campaign to collaborate on? And what were some of the lessons learned on both the TCG and ELC side? So <laughs> I guess there's an inside joke there. Um, I'd be, you know what, Gail? I'd be interested. What are what are your favorite campaigns we've collaborated on? I would say, I think mine was uh, botanical repair because I think we had taken the learnings from Invati and it felt like botanical repair was a good one. Yeah, I would, botanical repair is good. I would have to say our last summer campaign, which focused on Nutriplenish was probably my favorite because I think yeah. um, we had taken, we had been together almost a year. So we had a year worth of learning under our belt in numerous ways. One is hair care. Like I wasn't born and raised in hair care. It was in fashion and, um, pretty much fashion. And so learning hair and what it meant and, you know, the hair types and textures, 1A to 4C, you know, just really understanding that, really understanding our products and how they work and the efficacy, how to work within the Estee Lauder network, um, what, what resonated with consumers. There's a question about pivoting from finance to marketing, which keeps cracking me up simply because marketing is all data. So I'm like, oh, you don't even have to pivot. You just <laughs> transfer your skills over. Um, so all the data we've been able to collect from all of our previous campaigns um, was helpful in establishing this very large 17 week campaign. And I think what we learned from it was, oh, a lot of this works, a lot of it doesn't. We need to try. I think the one thing Sam and I have discovered through our time together and our sometimes late night, sometimes early morning, sometimes carpool drop-off phone calls, like, okay, that didn't work. We have to, we need the, we need a different outcome, but the same question is being asked. So let's try it this way this time. And I think every campaign, we just get one more thing ticked off our list that, okay, this is the way we're going to do this going forward, whether it's getting content from an artist or 
um, figuring out how to tell a really compelling story about windmills or what the heck is PCR and why would anyone care about it? You know, it's posted super recycled plastic. So I, I think that it's, we're still constantly learning and that's the fun part about marketing. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that. I think we have another question from Facebook. Uh, what are the first steps once you are certified? Uh, so I would suggest, you know, once you're certified, you definitely want to reach out to individuals like me, you know, that uh, represents the supplier diversity program for different companies, also depending on where you get your certification. So if you get it through like the city or state uh, that you live in, so we're in New York. So if you get it through there, you're also entered into their database. And, um, you know, when they're looking for diverse suppliers, they also look through that database to uh, reach out for opportunities. Um, but there are, you know, many different supplier diversity program managers at most major companies. I would also suggest, and I'm going to put another resource in the chat, um, that you register and sign up and create a profile on supplierio.com. That is the database that we use when we're looking for diverse suppliers. We you know, have a subscription to them um, and it gives us uh, access to over hundreds of thousands of diverse suppliers across all different categories. Um, and so if you have your certification, you're ready to start doing business with buyers like an ELC, most major, a good amount of supplier diversity programs leverage resources from supplier IO to search for diverse suppliers. And so it's also a good starting point to get your, your profile front and center to uh, other supplier diversity program managers. So I've also you know, shared that in the chat, but it's supplierone.co and you can go create a profile on there um, and you know, share your certifications as well as your capabilities. I uh, have any uh, all other questions, but Andrew, let me know if I've maybe missed some questions um, that may be coming in. Uh, no, um, there's one more, um, and it's in the uh, from Everett Bracken, and um, I think you can if you can see it. I don't see that one. Okay, let me see. So. So hi, Ashley, can you, well, you want your contact information, but I'll just put my um, info out, National Black MBA to forward it to her. But she wants to uh, you know, share her value proposition. Um, for decades, she's worked with Corn Ferry, Spencer Stewart, Hendrick and Struggles in the global executive recruiting in, uh, industry. And um, she specialized in senior level females, historically represented worldwide. So I think okay. This is this is a, this is a shout out to her. It's not a question. So it's more it's more it's more of a statement of fact. Thank you. Um, there is um, really I don't see any more formal questions, but I definitely want to um, ask one more. And um, I think um, this pertains more to Gail and Samantha a little bit more because that relationship, um, our, especially with um, black and brown people, they always have a perception of of the quality of work. And I really I'm glad you see um, Samantha on the screen. Can you tell a little bit, uh, share a little bit your authenticity of seeking help? So a lot of times a very vulnerable position, you know, uh, you're, you have a billion dollar brand and you are looking for help to communicate. Can you just articulate a little bit more that process of seeking a great talent like Samantha and her brother um, to help you um, tell your story properly to the community? Yeah, I think it was, I'm a pretty transparent and open person and very direct. Um, and so when we had our calls with the different agencies, I was, I was very honest and open with where we were at as a brand, where my vision was to bring the brand, um, and what about this brand was so compelling to anyone who would be lucky enough to work on it, because I truly feel like anyone who does get to work on any Estee Lauder brand, but especially Aveda is very lucky. We are a family organization. We are... Um, Estee Lauder is a family organization and you do feel like that, but Aveda just really has a lot of, it's been an incredible beauty company for a very long time and it's, um, it's time has come. And so that's where that, that you should feel fortunate to work on a brand like this. And so, um, but we have, you know, as I said, I'm very transparent. We had challenges. We didn't know how to communicate across the spectrum. We could do, you know, 
very high um, value artistic hair. I mean, when I say that we, our photo shoots used to take place on the Himalayan mountains, I'm not lying. They would helicopter into the top of a Himalayan mountain to shoot pictures that had, you know, captured nature in its most raw form in the Amazon jungles. I mean, we work with tribes across the globe. And so they do photo shoots of like the Yawanawa tribe and that that's who Aveda was. So we could do that, but how do I get, you know, just regular people who really want to spend a lot of money on their hair and really understand it and want to take care of it and use really high, high, incredible quality ingredients that don't destroy the planet that are aligned with their values across the globe to know what Aveda is and who Aveda is. And we just weren't good at that. And that's what, you know, very transparently we were saying to Sam and her team that um, I really need someone who can understand taking those Himalayan mountain shots and translating that to all, all the consumers across the globe. And Sam demonstrated that ability in their, in our first sort of credentials pitch. And then in the first, we didn't start as a, you know, it's gonna be a lifelong relationship. Let's just do one thing together. It's kind of like a first date. Um, so I had our first date and it was really incredible and it worked out great. And so we took it to the next level and, you know, that's where even Sam started bringing up, okay, but diverse hair is a problem for you. Like I'm not seeing any black hair. Where is it? You say you test on all hair types, but I'm not getting that content. And, you know, she was the one saying, okay, how do we, how do we get that? Do we go to artists? Do we, who do we talk to? And at the same time, Aveda was working really hard in the background to make sure that, we diversified our talent pool in front of the camera, behind the camera. We have a texture team in place, you know, led by some incredible stylists now, um, educating every student across the Aveda globe on textured hair. And, you know, so it's been a long road, but um, I don't know, I'm, ram I'm rambling. I hope I answered your question. I, I, I'm you nodding did. with Andrew yeah. I think yeah, you did, you did. In, a, you did. in a great way. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. So before um, I turn it over back to Andrew, I know we're at the close. I do want to thank Samantha and Gail, you know, for sharing your story, uh, being a part of our journey, you know, and really amplifying the voices of our diverse suppliers, doing the great work um, that we need, and so, and and for you know, sharing this, of course, with our partners uh, over at the National Black MBA Association. And thank you for your time. And Andrew, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to present to your members. It's been wonderful and hopefully insightful. It definitely has. Um, once again, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, uh, you guys are trendsetters. Um, I, it is not. Um, every day that uh, companies speak very authentically and very and very real. Um, the consumer is very savvy. Um, and, 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 and I believe that straightforward talk always gets you um, straightforward results. Um, so thank you again to Samantha, Gail, and Ashley. And thank you again to our, um, our friends from uh, Estee Lauder and Aveda, and uh, especially more specifically, Christina and Kaylin and our um, other partners and, and supporters at Estee Lauder. Uh, we're gonna have another event on October 20th. Uh, it'll be focused on dermatology, uh, focus on investing in your skin. Uh, we're gonna have another event um, after that one about natural hair. Um, ironically, we brought that up with, with our colleagues this, um, this evening. Uh, but once again, um, stay close to us. I know a few people mentioned um, in, a, in a chat about getting certifications. We did sign a deal with the New York City about um, getting certifications for our members, um, BNYC New York. So that's the reason why I was asking um, you to send, send us an email so you collect, it, collect that group and hopefully you'll be the next round of great um, vendors and suppliers and great partners like Samantha and her brother are doing right now with our, with our friends from Nevada. So on behalf of the Metro New York chapter of the National Black MBAs, I wish you a very happy Wednesday evening and I wish you a very uh, great week. But more importantly, I, I wish you a very... Um, quiet and, un, un, and, and, and a very uninterrupted rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.